Hey, what's up? Welcome back to another quick Flutter tutorial. I've been redesigning the Instagram UI because I'm bored of the current design. And so I redid the profile page and one point of difference to highlight is the staggered grid view, which I think looks pretty nice. So I'll show you how to do this by jumping into the code. So just to keep everyone on the same page in my main function, I'm running my app which brings us to this profile page and I've got that in a separate folder called pages which gives us a blank scaffold so you should just have a white blank cap like this now the first thing is I'm just going to prepare some dummy images so I've got 10 images here in a folder so one thing to note is you can choose images that have different aspect ratios since we're going to use a staggered grid view so it's okay if you have you know varying heights I named them image one through 10 and I'm going to go to my project folder and let's go to the library and let's drag this image folder in. So now we need to come back to the code and tell the project in the pubspec.yaml, if you scroll down, you can see the assets. Let's make sure to tell it that we are importing the library slash images folder. Now let's start coding. So the first thing is in Instagram, as well as like many other social media apps, they use a lot of tab bars. So I'll show you what that means. We're going to have to wrap our scaffold in a default tab controller. Now I've made a separate tutorial specifically for tab bars. So check that out if you need, but I can show you how to do it right now. So let's say for example, like length three and in the body of the column, we have to have two things. One is the tab bar itself, and then we have to show the tab bar view below it. So it'll make more concrete sense after I show you. In the tab bar, we have to give it the tabs. So these are going to be essentially just icons. So if I have like three of these and I rerun the app, uh, it looks like it's at the top and we can't really see it right now. So I'm going to just put in a app bar. Cool, so this is what we mean by tabs. Now I can't really see it because it's white, so I'm gonna change the color to gray. I'm going to actually code this children of tabs separately, just to keep our code nice and clean. So let's just create a list of tabs. And then we can just give this to our UI. So if I just make them all gray, we have a home icon for them. So what I want is, let's say I want a feed tab, a reels tab, and what was the last one? It's like a tag, tagged tab. So let's just try to find some appropriate icons here. Cool, now if I come back down to our tab bar, so tab bar are those icons that you click around and the tab bar view is what you display underneath. So tab bar views, let's also code that at the top. So for this, if you can essentially think of it as like pages, like we're gonna display different pages. Okay, now we haven't created these pages yet. So let's just say feed view, reels view, and tagged view for now. And let's create a new folder called tabs and create these tabs here. Cool, and just to show you, I'm going to create really quickly in the middle, just put in a text widget just so that we can see it. Okay, so hopefully if I save this now and I import all of these guys and give it the children, now we have an error. It says the horizontal viewpoint has unbounded height. Oh, so if you look at the column, our tab bar view, we have to give it a specified height. Now I want it to fill up the rest of the space. So let's just say expanded. Okay, there you go. You can see we can click around and go to the different tabs. So, so far, this is just the basics of using tab bars. So now let's start to make this into a sort of social media app. So at the top, let's put in some profile information, right? So I'm going to say, let's have the following and then the profile pic in the middle and then the followers on the right. So for now, I'm just gonna put in some dummy information. 
I don't want an app bar, so let's get rid of that. But I want to avoid the notch area. So let's wrap this in a safe area. Cool. And for the profile pic for now, I'm just going to put in a container. That's a circle. We can put in an image anytime. Okay, so now if I come to this overall row, I'm going to center this alignment and it still doesn't look quite right. Now I'm going to wrap the padding for the center just for the horizontal section. Maybe let's go for 20. And if you look at these individual columns on either side, I don't want the alignment like that. I want it to be cross axis alignment to the end. And this one, I want the cross axis alignment to the start. Yep, I kind of want this kind of alignment. Cool, and let's just change up some of these textiles, make it bold and bigger. And let's just add some size box here just to space this out a bit. It's looking pretty good. Maybe one at the top. Cool. And I always like to have a bit of a color contrast. So for the text, let's make this a bit more gray. Sweet, and now it's time for the sort of block of information below the profile picture, like the name, the bio, some links, and some buttons. So again, I'm just gonna put in some text widgets here. And let's just try to keep this spacing consistent. And for the name, I want it to be bold. And let's put this in a row so that we can have the name on the left and also the, I guess, the person's profession on the right. Cool, and let's make sure to center this alignment. And now time for the bio. So for this one, let's just put in some random texts for now. And let's just make it a bit gray. Cool, and then below that we want to have a link. So this should be like a blue color. Let's see what bold looks like. Okay, maybe not for the middle one. And maybe the... Spacing, we can bring it a bit closer. Make it five. Cool, now time for the buttons. So... These are those buttons, so we have two buttons that say like edit profile and also contact. Like these could be any, any buttons really. But let's just get the aesthetics right first. So I'm going to expand this and if I have two expanded widgets then it'll be in halves. So I'm going to make one grey, I'm going to make the other one black. And so for the black one the text should be white. And let's add some padding. Yeah, I like 20. And let's have a little gap between these buttons. And put a padding around the entire row.
Cool, now the border is very sharp, so let's try to curve this. And I think the middle could actually be closer. Okay, so, so far this is looking pretty good. And now it's time for some extra space. So now it's time for the staggered grid view. Now I recently made a separate tutorial covering the staggered grid view. So check that out if you need more specific help on, on that. But let's make sure to go to your pubspec.yaml and import this package in. And save it. Cool, now I'm just gonna add some const tags. Okay, so on this first feed view, which is the one I'm gonna show you, let's put in the staggered grid view. So what we need to say is masonry, that's the style I'm gonna go for. And for the cross axis count, I want two. And for the item builder, we can now put in the image. So let's just get one image for now. And let's just check, what did we call, what's the name of this image? It's image one, not images. So make sure the file path is correct. And let's just print say 10 of these. Cool, there it is. So right now it looks like a regular grid. Now one thing to note about the sort of user experience here is when they scroll, you can see the top half of the screen just remains static and then the bottom half is what scrolls, right? So I actually don't want this to happen. I want the entire screen to scroll together. So for the physics for this particular grid view, I want to make it never scrollable. And then if you come back to the profile page, we were using a column, which is a static situation. Let's change this to a list view which is very similar except it is scrollable. Now you can see that we have an error because when you use list views, we have to specify a height. So if you come back down here, so you can see for a column, you can use expanded widgets because it just has like the rest of the space to fill. But in a list view, the space is infinite. So you can't really use expanded widgets here. So I'm gonna change this to a size box and just give it a fixed height. Okay, so you can see like the whole bio and the profile picture section at the top is scrolling together. Now it looks like some of this we have to realign. Now you can see the save area widget. It's It was helpful for us before, but now I want to get rid of this because I want I don't want it to cut off at the top and bottom. So let's just get rid of this one and yeah, there we go, much cleaner. Okay, sweet. So now coming back to the images, if you look at the way I named the images, it's going from one through to 10. And I just wanna print all these out. So this index starting from zero will go to the item count. So let's just play around with this string a little bit. So starting from the index, let's just add one. Save it, and there we go, we can now print all the images. Cool, and that's what this staggered grid view is doing. You can see like it's not just all squares, it's uh, respecting the height. Okay, now one cool thing you can do is to add some padding. Now you can see when you add padding like eight around all the sides, it actually doesn't do a good job of spacing it out because you can see it kind of doubles up at the middle, right? Like on the left side, you got eight, and then you have two eights in the middle, so that becomes 16. So one way to sort this out is to wrap your entire grid with the same padding, okay? So if I have eight and eight, or like four and four, everything should be evenly spaced out. Cool, and this looks pretty good. Now, one other tip is we can wrap this image in a clip R rect, and what this does is it just lets you control the border radius, right? So instead of being so sharp, 
we can change this and curve the corners a bit. And that's looking pretty good. I reckon this padding could be even tighter. Yeah, I think that looks good. And of course you can make this radius a lot bigger to curve the corners a lot more, which also looks pretty good. But yeah, we still have some more uh, tabs to fill out. Now I just noticed a issue. When we come back to this tab, the images are like reloading and that's not very good. So I'm gonna have to try to sort that out and, and fix that because this is going to be part of a bigger social media UI kit I'm, I'm working on right now. So if anyone has a solution to this, let me know. Otherwise I'll have to fix it myself. <laughs> but yeah, that's all I had planned for this video. So hopefully you learned something. If you made it this far into the tutorial, then drop me a purple heart just so I know. But thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.